So RedSec actually runs really well across the systems that I've tested so far, but I wanted to dig deeper and see how much of a difference each X3D generation really makes. Is upgrading to the latest chip worth it, or does an older X3D still give you enough punch? Let's find out. So here are the three different configurations I'm using. We'll start with the 5700X3D setup. It's running on an X570 Aorus Master with 64 gigs of DDR4 at 3600 CL16, running a one to one to one F clock to M clock to U clock ratio. This is ideal for AM4. It's also running a minus 30 curve optimizer undervolt for maximum efficiency. On the AM5 side, the 7800X3D and 9800X3D were both tested on an X870E Nova motherboard paired with 64 gigs of DDR5 at 6000 CL30 in a 1 to 1 M clock to U clock ratio. I ran the F clock at 2200 for the 98 and at 2000 for the 78. For AM5, it's ideal to push the F clock as high as possible and then synchronize the M clock and U clock. The 7800X3D is running a minus 30 undervolt, while the 9800X3D has a plus 200 megahertz boost clock override and a minus 40 undervolt applied. All three builds used an Aorus 10K Gen 5 NVMe SSD for storage and a Zotac RTX 5090 solid for the GPU. I have links to the tuning videos for each CPU in the upper right hand corner or they're included in the video description below as well. In terms of in-game settings, I use the low graphics preset with native DLAA, no frame generation or upscaling. Testing was done by running a consistent route in the marina area of the map during live battle royale duo matches with three runs per resolution at 1080, 1440, and 4K. I then took the averages of those runs and used them for comparison. At 1080p, the 9800X3D leads the pack with an average of 290 FPS. This is about 6% faster than the 7800X3D and 23% faster than the 5700X3D. The 9800X3D also shows noticeably higher 1% and 0.1% lows, meaning better frame pacing and fewer stutters during heavy scenes. The 7800X3D still delivers excellent consistency, staying close behind, while the 5700X3D had the lowest numbers of the bunch, as expected. This resolution highlights the raw CPU scaling between generations most clearly. If you look at the generational gains, there is roughly a 15% jump with each generation, and that's pretty significant. That being said though, the 5700X3D is already averaging nearly 240 FPS, which is pretty good, while the 9800X3D averages more than 20% higher FPS. In practice, it was actually pretty hard to feel a noticeable difference in gameplay. Even on the 5700X3D, frame pacing was smooth enough that the action felt ultra responsive and fluid. At 1440, the performance gap narrowed slightly. The 9800X3D still maintained about a 12% lead over the 78 and around 20% lead over the 5700X3D. The 1% and 0.1% lows also remain stronger on the AM5 chips, showing better frame consistency in numbers. The 7800X3D's efficiency and stability continue to shine here, with frame pacing not too far off the 9800X3D. And again, the 5700X3D trails in numbers here. So taking a step back, there's roughly a 10% performance gain per generation from the 5700X3D, which is still a healthy improvement. However, the 5700X3D is averaging around 230 FPS and gameplay still feels ultra smooth and responsive. And honestly, it would be pretty hard for me to tell which system I'm on if I didn't know beforehand. The experience really felt that consistent across all three CPUs, even though the numbers did vary a little bit. Finally, at 4K, the results tightened significantly. All three CPUs land within just a few frames of each other with the 9800X3D averaging only about 1-3% to higher than the 78 and 5700X3D. The GPU becomes more of the limiting factor here and the frame lows are nearly identical across all three chips. This shows that at 4K, RedSec becomes heavily GPU bound, reducing the differences between these chips. In other words, the differences practically disappear. 
The GPU bottleneck fully takes over and average FPS along with 1% lows are nearly the same across all CPUs. Whether I was on the 57, 78 or 9800 X3D, I got a smooth and playable experience and the generational advantages are essentially muted at this resolution. So is it worth upgrading if you're already on a 5700X3D to go to a 78 or 9800X3D? To tackle this question, let's first start with the current market prices. The 57 and 5800X3D are going for about $250 to $300 used. The new stock is basically gone now, you really can't find them new. The 7800X3D sells for around $400 new and the 9800X3D is about 480. Now you can find better deals here and there, but I'm just going for the most common prices I'm seeing. Now RAM prices have basically tripled over the last few months due to the AI boom, whether it's DDR4 or DDR5. A 64 gigabyte kit of DDR4 is roughly $300 right now, and for a 64 gigabyte kit of DDR5, it's gonna be around 400 bucks. In order to compare the value of these chips, I added up the total CPU plus 64 gigabytes RAM cost and then divided it by the average FPS at 1080, 1440, and 4K. This gives us a simple dollars per frame metric. Basically, it's how much each frame costs you in terms of the CPU. I did the CPU and RAM together because I consider those a package. So here's what that looks like in numbers. Now obviously there are other components to consider when you're doing a build, but for this comparison I'm just using the CPU and RAM to give us a basic idea of the differences between each chip here. So the total cost for a 5700X3D with 64 gigs of RAM is going to be about 550 to 600 bucks. In 1080 at best it's going to be about $2.33 per FPS, in 1440 about $2.38 and in 4K about $1.50 per FPS. For a new 7800X3D with 64 gigs of RAM, it's gonna cost you about 800 bucks, and that comes out to about $2.93 per FPS in 1080, $3.23 per FPS in 1440, and about $1.85 per FPS in 4K. For the 9800X3D with 64 gigs, it's gonna be about 880 bucks, and in 1080, using this metric, that's about $3.03 per FPS. In 1440, it's about $3.15. And in 4K, that's about $1.80 per FPS. To sum it up, if you want the best value, and especially if you're already on an AM4 platform, a 5700X3D gives the best bang for the buck. And that's been the story for the 5000X3Ds for a long time. And it seems like it's going to hold that pattern for a long time. The 7800X3D and 9800X3D give you better performance. I'm not a ultra competitive player, so for me, the actual difference wasn't that large. If you're a 4K player, you're probably gonna wanna invest more on the GPU side than the CPU side. If you're building new, I'd probably go AM5, considering the prices for the 5000X3Ds right now and DDR4. The 7800X3D gives the best value. 9800X3D is a top dog. If you're already on AM4, I'd probably just stick with it right now. Given the skyrocketing prices of RAM, I'd go with a used 57, 58, or even a 5600X3D if you can find it. This is going to be the best bang for your buck. If you're an ultra competitive player or you're just after the absolute top performance, the 9800X3D is the peak and you can expect modest gains over the 7800X3D. Just a few things to remember, prices fluctuate a lot and they vary by region. Used availability differs by region as well. This comparison does not include motherboard costs or GPU costs or any other components. And I'm just trying to isolate comparing the CPUs right now. Reusing RAM or motherboard from an older build obviously changes the math and always factor in what you already own. Everyone's situation and preferences are gonna be different so you can just use this as a guide to start your upgrade or purchasing process. So that's everything I've got for this one. I hope you found it helpful. If it helped you make a purchase decision, please consider using the affiliate links down below. It's the best way to support the channel and it really helps me to keep bringing you hardware comparisons like this. And if not, no worries. Thanks for checking out my content anyway. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.